good afternoon to everybody and i welcome all of you to fifth session on sage math so today we are going to concentrate on calculus so this will be a continuation of the last lecture in the last lecture we looked at basically the calculus concepts for one variable functions we started with limit continuity differentiability and we also looked at some applications in this lecture we will look at finding integral of functions along with some applications standard applications we will look at how to deal with multivariate functions and explore various concepts that we come across in uh, multivariable functions including local maxima minima and in case time permits i'll also uh, look at dealing with constraint maximization minimization problem what is known as method of lagrange multipliers so this is a plan for uh, today's lecture so let us uh, begin with uh, some uh, problem so for example suppose you want to find integral of such functions integral of cos x upon square root sin x plus 1 dx the uh, indefinite integral or definite integral from 0 to pi by 2 or integral of the third type so the, these integrals are uh, not very complicated but uh, still uh, one may require uh, some work so let us see how we can uh, find these integrals in sage and several other uh, examples so let us define a function f of x is equal to cos x upon square root 1 plus sin x right now we want to find integral of this function so uh, of course you can just use f dot tab and you will see there is some option called integral so you can um, or you can say uh, integrate integrate f of x and then with respect to the variable x okay so you can see here the integral is 2 into square root sin x plus 1 so this is fairly simple actually uh, but suppose you want to find the the definite integral then uh, the same the same command I need to mention the limit so I can simply say find it integral with respect to x and give the limit from 0 to pi by 2 0 to pi by 2 so this is a definite integral so in uh, mostly in uh, simple cases it will be very easy to to find out however in case uh, there is no closed form of the integral it you may have to deal with uh, finding in, uh, integral using numerical methods or what is called numerical integration integral that we will uh, look at uh, a few examples okay so uh, this is fairly simple now suppose you want to find integral of the third one which is in square root x in plus square root x square plus one upon x uh, again with little bit um, maybe substitutions etc you can find out so let us define the function fx is equal to square root of x plus square root of 1 plus x square divided by x so this is a function if i want to check whether i have defined the function correctly or not you can ask it to show show f of x right so you can see here this is this is uh, uh, correct this is what we wanted so this is the function we want to find its integral so uh, suppose we want to find using the same function Mm, same sage function let us say integrate f of x with respect to x and then it is taking a little time um, and let us see what we get yeah so the in, the value of this integral it is able to compute sage is able to, to compute the integral and it is giving you the value in terms of gamma function it is also in terms of hyper geometric functions and all that okay some of you may be aware about these functions so you can look at uh, whether it is correct or not but uh, if i want to find the numerical value of this of course uh, you can you can uh, you can uh, put this in some variable let us say i'll call this as v stands for value or let me say capital i stands for integral and i can say i dot n i dot n then it uh, this uh, right this doesn't seem to be just uh, uh, numerical value is not so in that case you can find out what is called numerical integral right so there are several methods of finding numerical integration of a function so uh, how you will use 
so there is a function called numerical underscore integral of f of x of f of x and you need to mention uh, from the, uh, the limit 0 to x and you can also mention what is the maximum number of points that you want to to, uh, to consider that is the interval how many uh, sub intervals you want to divide right so let us say if i if i execute this it is giving me the integral the value of the integral is 79.0037 and so on and the error is quite substantial okay so in this case the error is quite substantial of course if you increase the number of points the error may reduce but of course in this case the the value of uh, it, it may take more time okay so uh, we will also look at some more numerical integrals as we go along now suppose i have to find integral of this function which is where a and b are uh, variables so 1 upon vx plus a to the power 1 by 3 and um, to the uh, into x q right so let us say we will define a and b as variables a and b as variables and fx is this function so again you can make sure that uh, what you have typed is correct or not so you, you can use show command yeah this is correct right so now let us look at suppose we want to uh, evaluate this integral integral of uh, i don't need to write uh, like this i can simply say f of x with respect to x then you get uh, some some error because it, the sage is unable to compute uh, this in exact form of course this is uh, this function is integrable and the value depends upon a so it is asking whether is a positive or negative so it, it wants to know because based on that the value depends so let us let us assume that a is positive and try to find out what is the integral uh, so let us uh, let us see so, so the way to uh, to uh, make the assumption for a variable you can use a function called assume assume a positive and then if i say integrate this function f of x f of x with respect to x then it is able to find this integral in closed form okay so uh, many times you need to mention what is the variable uh, domain and uh, assume is one such uh, function which will uh, which will do the job okay so uh, similarly let us look at suppose we have to find this integral of e to the power minus x square dx from 0 to infinity this is a very um, standard uh, function and um, those who have done little bit of statistics uh, we would be familiar with this function it is quite uh, popular but very, very commonly used so let us say if i want to integrate this let us say first let us integrate and find this indefinite integral so the integral is given by half into square root of pi into uh, error function x of course uh, you can uh, look at what is this error function how it is defined right okay so uh, now suppose we want to find the the integral from 0 to infinity then uh, you can say integral of this from uh, 0 to o, o o o stands for infinity we came across this in last lecture also or you can type infinity both are uh, same so if i say so then integral is half into square root pi okay half a square half into square root pi is the value of integral if i integrate this uh, from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity of course you can check that this function is an even function so integral will be twice of this so let us say let us verify this integral from minus infinity so i can say minus o uh, let me also put this as plus o and then the integral is square root pi which is twice of the the first integral right and um, you can even integrate the function of two variables and all that with the same function integral or integrate even integrate you can use okay uh, so already you can see that sage is also able to handle symbolic uh, integration we already have some example but for example if you want to integrate x to the power n x to the power n of course you need to say what is n n is a variable and it should be uh, positive so in that case um, the integral is we all all of us know it is x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 right so uh, <clears throat> not only you can find numerical integral but also you can find 
symbolic uh, integral but of course um, uh, you cannot expect says to find integral of any damn function first of all uh, not every function is integrable even if it is integrable finding integral is really a, a challenging task uh, most often you don't have integral in closed form okay so uh, in that case you may have to um, uh, appeal to numerical integration okay right so uh, so we already have seen numerical integration let us say let us look at one more example uh, so if i want to find out numerical integral of sin to the power t cube plus sin t right from 0 to pi so then it gives you the answer the, the value of the integral is 3.3333 uh, and so on and the error so whenever you find numerical integral there is also error involved in this so the error is 3.3700 into 10 power minus 14 which is fairly uh, small very very um, less error of course you can uh, increase the number of evaluations and tolerance limit you can look at um, help on numerical integration and uh, see how you can uh, you can decrease the error right so similarly if you want to just to make sure that you what we are doing is what sage is giving is correct if i want to find numerical integral of sine of x square so we know that integral of x square is x cube by 3 and if the integral is from 0 to 1 so it will be 1 by 3 and that is what it is giving you and the error is 10 to the power minus 15 right okay so uh, this is how you can find numerical integral uh, but uh, uh, See, there are different numerical integrals uh, as uh, all of you must be knowing and um, for example, uh, you can find integral, uh, you can approximate the integral using midpoint approximation or uh, using trapezoidal rule or using Simpson's uh, rule. Again, Simpson's has Simpson's one third, Simpson's three eight and so on, right? There are several of them. So, uh, let us see with little bit of uh, programming language you can uh, even uh, uh, find out integral using these these rules for example here uh, we have given what is called midpoint rule and then trapezoidal rule and then this is simpson's one third rule and in all these cases, we also want to look at what is the error term so here we have taken the function f of x is equal to one upon uh, one plus x square it's an integral I'm sure all of you know so I mean uh, so what is integral of this function if I fx is this and if I want to say integrate integrate f of x with respect to x this integral is tan inverse x this is fairly uh, standard one so we want to find out what is its integral numerical integral from uh, 0 to 1 and this uh, small simple code uh, gives you integral value of the integral so you can see here the number of uh, the sub intervals that you want to divide um, the, this uh, interval 0 1 into and then the h which is the step length the length of each sub interval then the error term using what the midpoint rule error term using trapezoidal rule and error term using simpsons uh, here simpsons one third is is considered but you can also look at uh, other other uh, rules simpsons 3 8th and other things etc right so if i if i run this this code is fairly simple here i'm uh, running uh, this we are taking n uh, five values n is equal to 6 then n equal to 12 n equal to 20 and then 50 and then 100 and for each n it will find what is the integral numerical integral first using midpoint rule right so mid and then using trapezoidal rule trapezoidal rule i'm sure all of you you know it is the formula is h by 2 into f at x naught that is the starting point plus 2 times the remaining term and plus the f of the last term okay so that is what uh, is done similarly simpson's one third rule h by 3 into f at a plus uh, look at the four times sum of the 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 uh, odd odd terms plus 2 times sum of the even terms and then at the last term that is simpson's one third rule and then every after that this everything is ap uh, appended in in a list which we have started with approximates approx right and the first is the header term and let us say run this code 
and let us so uh, let us uh, tabulate this print this in tabular form so this is what it says it says that when i am taking n is equal to 6 12 20 uh, 50 100 h is the value right and h is the length of the int sub interval and this is the midpoint uh, midpoint uh, error using midpoint rule so you can see here as you increase n the error term is decreasing similarly trapezoidal rule and if you compare try to compare the error uh, of course here we have not considered absolute errors that is why it is um, it is giving you the, the also the negative somewhere but uh, i can make it absolute error so here this 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 i have to make it absolute value then you will get absolute error okay so uh, right and again you can see here the, using simpson's rule the error is much smaller i mean uh, compared to other uh, midpoint and trapezoidal rule and uh, i mean uh, try to add simpson's 3 8th in this list so that you can also compare uh, with this but you can also try to see uh, uh, for example change the way the functor will also depend upon the function so you may now i think uh, all of you must be fairly confident in even creating some kind of uh, <coughs> interactive plots and using that you can even create uh, uh, interactive plot of how this uh, integral how is the area uh, uh, under the curve is measured using um, using the, the some of these rules so i, I encourage you to to uh, create an interactive plot for the, for this okay so there is another way a uh, numerical way of finding the integral which is called monte carlo uh, method so that also is inbuilt in um, sage uh, but fairly this this basically what it does is it, it generates a, a random points in the the the, the domain and then um, it, it it counts how many points are inside the the under the function or inside the the area which you want to consider what is outside and then we take some kind of ratio right so this is uh, if i execute this so here x and y are sr dot var means it is taking a symbolic variables or you can simply use var both will work so in this case of course uh, it, it this this is not as uh, accurate or the error will be slightly higher um, and if you go very uh, large number of uh, the points that you want to generate um, in that uh, domain then the error may uh, decrease but uh, of course it will take more time okay so right this is and this is a function of two variables you can see here we are integrating f of x y equal uh, to x into y x varying between uh, 0 to 2 y also varying between 0 to 2 so this these are the x coordinate of the two integrals the two variables x and y these are y coordinates okay so uh, of course this is uh, you can even find exact integral using integral function so and this is iterative iterated integral right so to say in this case how we will find using says uh, you have to first integrate with respect to one variable let us say first we are integrating with respect to variable x and then whatever the integral you get that you integrate with respect to variable y so the answer is the exact answer is 4 whereas uh, using monte carlo method it has given the answer to be 4.0043 uh, and so on so that there is a error involved in this if i increase for example if i let me i'll not increase if i decrease this i want only 1000 points then you can see that the error will be much larger okay so that's why you should have fairly large uh, then the error term will become smaller right so this is monte carlo method um, but uh, this this even uh, writing program for computing monte carlo method is fairly simple i i uh, encourage uh, all of you at least in case you are a uh, little bit comfortable writing programs all these loops etc you should try to write your own program to find integral using monte carlo method yeah right now let us look at uh, some simple applications so one of the applications i am sure you must have seen is finding area between two curves right so let us say we have two curves um, one is absolute value of x other one is cos x and we want to find the area between these two curves from um, minus pi to pi by minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so let us plot graph of these functions 
first right so this is uh, green green um, curve is uh, <coughs> cos x and uh, this uh, this blue one is absolute value of x and the area between these two are already shaded so sage already had in plot there is an option called fill fill so you can fill the the area between uh, between the two curves and there are various fill options are available you can fill uh, above the x axis or um, between two two curves you can mention what is the curve from which to, to which you want to fill so here it is filled between uh, g to f that is what it means uh, right so uh, <coughs> so g is cos x and uh, f is absolute value of x so this is the area between these two curves now let us find out what is the the value the area you know that it is integral of f of x uh, so area between f and g now we have to find the area now it will depend upon what is the intersection so you can see here there is one in these two curves intersect one uh, between minus 1 and 0.5 the other intersection is again because it is symmetric it is between minus 0.5 and 1 so if you find one other one is negative of that so uh, we know that we can use find root function from sage to find locate this point where it intersects so let us say we, we will uh, we will uh, mm. find c1 find root of fx minus gx between minus 1 and 0 so let us see what is the value c1 c1 is minus 7.39085 and so on and c2 which is the on the right hand side which will be positive the negative of this which is 0 0.739085 and so on right okay so uh, let us find out uh, c2 let us find out uh, c2 uh, but of course we know that c2 is negative of c1 so even if you don't find it is all right but in many cases they, it it could be different so uh, you have to keep that in mind and then let us let us find out let us find out uh, the i'll call integral i1 as integral between minus 1.5 to minus pi by 2 which is the a to the first point of intersection which is negative uh, 0 0.73 and then from uh, uh, c1 to c2 and then from c2 to pi by 2 okay so you have to split this integral into three parts integral of fx minus gx or you could have taken the absolute value of fx minus gx that will also do the job okay and then find the uh, let us say i1 plus i2 plus i3 so this is what is the value if i want numerical value you know already what to do so dot in so the integral the or area between these two curves is 2.069355 and so on right so this is fairly simple of course here the main task would be to find the intersection and right generally if you are given arbitrary curve finding integral manual finding the intersection manually is somewhat uh, tedious job and most often you may not be even able to uh, get the explicit value so that is where you need to uh, call the numerical uh, roots and sage has inbuilt function in terms of find root so that you can always use right similarly let us look at another thing you uh, so in last lecture we looked at mean lagrange mean value theorem for uh, differentiation now this is uh, mean value theorem for integral and this says that in case the function is integrable and uh, the, if you look at the the integral a to b fx dx divided by the length that is b minus a this is what is called average value of the function this is called average value of the function right hand side and the, the result says that the, this average value is attained by the function at some point c between a and b okay so let us uh, try to verify this this is fairly simple so we let us take a function x in x plus sin x square okay and a is 1 b is 3 and let us first plot the graph let us plot the graph of the, the curve and the area shade the area between this curve and x axis and end points are also um, plotted end points are also plotted if you want you can write um, some text inside this uh, in, in shaded region and now let us find out the numerical integral of f of x from a to b but uh, as, as you know numerical integral if you look at numerical integral it gave two values 
it gave two values numerical let me see it gave two value first is the the value of the integral and then the error term so i have to extract the first value of the numerical integral that is that is the integral uh, zeroth term of this which is the first one zeroth index which is the first one so that's the average value the average value is 2.23164 uh, and so on right so that's the <coughs> that's the average value next what we have to do we, we need to find we need to find uh, what is the uh, Uh, a display uh, sorry uh, uh, we need to find what is the c right so what is c this uh, you need to find c for which f of c is equal to this so this term right hand side the average value we have already found out therefore we only have to uh, solve f of x minus this average value for zero find the root of this and that you can do is using find underscore root fx minus f average between a and b right so it's uh, possible that this uh, c is more than uh, one value but at least one value it will give, give right so in this case let us see what is c c is um, c is uh, 1.232329 which lies between 1 and 3 so that that verifies the mean value theorem of integral right so we uh, we have verified this Similarly, several other uh, applications you can look at. For example, one of the application also you must have studied is volume of solid of revolution. So in last class, we looked at how we can generate uh, solid of revolution or um, the surface of a revolution um, of a curve. So uh, let us try to do one simple problem. So in case you have two curves, let us say fx and gx, and uh, you want to find uh, the volume of solid of revolution of the the, um, the region between fx and gx from a to b right so in this case the formula for this volume is i'm not going to get how to derive this but it is pi uh, and the a and b the, the limit you have to mention i i have not written here it should have been a to b so uh, g of x whole square minus f of x whole square dx and under the condition that gx is bigger than f of x so let us take a simple example suppose your fx is x cube plus one and gx is x square plus one let us and let us plot graph of these two functions so this is the the area region between fx and gx and if you rotate this about x axis if you rotate this about x axis it will generate a solid of course there will be hollow inside uh, but then there will be uh, in in between there will be uh, the solid so let us let us generate this uh, surface of a revolution using revolution plot 3d function fx x going from a to b parallel to x axis also show the curve and opacity equal to 4 means the shading right shading will be less the color first one is green second one is the uh, first one is red second one is green and then let us look at what is the surface so this is the surface of our evolution let me let me rotate uh, let me rotate and show you so this is the surface of our evolution of course uh, this doesn't look like there is uh, some solid <laughs> in between but uh, yeah this is surface of revolution okay now we want to find what is the volume of this surface of revolution so of course one has to uh, find the volume of the outer surface uh, minus volume of the lower uh, surface and that is the volume so the area the volume formula uh, yeah so volume formula is pi times uh, just one second pi times integral of f of x whole square minus g of x whole square in this case fx is bigger than gx right otherwise you have to take gx square minus fx square right and a to b so that's the value of the integral this is fairly simple uh, but uh, in case the function is complicated you may have to uh, use numerical integration right you can also find let us say suppose you have ellipse x square upon a square plus y square upon b square equal to 1 a and b are same uh, major and semi minor axis and then 
let us say you want to revolve this the region inside this ellipse about x axis then it will uh, it will make a ellipsoid you can find the volume of volume of this ellipsoid so let us see how we are going to do so let us let us all of you know how to plot this ellipsoid now let me let me do that mm, so we can use uh, this is implicitly defined function so but let us first give what is what are a and b so i'll say a uh, or let me just write implicit implicit uh, plot the function is x square upon let us say a is um, i'll say 2 or let us say a is 1 plus b is y, y square b is 2 so it will be divided by 4 this minus 1 and let us say x goes from minus 2 to let us say minus 3 to 3 and y also goes from minus 3 to 3 okay so that's the ellipse of course we can draw the x-axis and y-axis this is the ellipse now this you want to rotate about uh, rotate about x-axis then it will form a uh, ellipsoid you want to find volume of this ellipsoid so I'm sure all of you know already what is the formula of this uh, volume but let us see how we are going to do so first of course this um, sage has inbuilt function to get a surface of revolution right so uh, but then it re requires surface of revolution of a surf of a uh, some curve which is defined by given by y equal to f of x this this ellipse is not a function of x right so but if you take upper half play upper half part of the ellipsoid or lower half part and then rotate about x axis you will get ellipsoid so that is what we will do so uh, in that, this case let us first find out where does this intersect symbolically uh, on x axis so solve x square upon a square plus y square upon b square minus 1 is equal to 0 for y because we want y in terms of x y is a function of x and solution dictionary is equal to true this again you have already seen this this is going to generate uh, the solution in terms of uh, dictionary so let us see so here it says that there are two solutions that is what you can expect uh, one on um, negative side of x axis other on negative positive side of x axis so it says that the first one is minus square root of a square minus x square up into b by a another one is positive uh, negative of that okay now we want to uh, uh, let us say we take upper half plane and of course i need to give because a and b are variables so let us take a is equal to 1 and b equal to 2 and then h is the uh, g we have defined as g we have defined uh, wait, wait wait so g i have not defined so i need to define this g g of g of x y is equal to this is uh, x square yeah right and now let us look at wait, wait. h of x <clears throat> this one the, the, so uh, okay so uh, first of all g is actually g should be the uh, uh, let us say upper part so solution of uh, let us say 0 and then uh, second second part i'll say mm, no solution 0 and then let us say first one of y so let us see what is what is let us just call this as g so what is g, uh, g? let us print that g is this this one and then now let us let us work this should work yeah okay so uh, then we substituted x equal, a equal to 1 and b equal to 2 and now let us look at the surface of revolution so you can see here we got this ellipsoid that's the surface of revolution of the ellip ellipse for a equal to 1 and b equal to 2 right so this is quite nice and we want to find volume of this 
so what is the volume volume uh, of this is going to be pi into integral of g x square and a going from 1 to uh, uh, g going from uh, wait 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 uh, this yeah so this this integral is going to be 4 upon 3 pi a into b square that's the that's the the formula for surface uh, the volume of this ellipsoid right so <clears throat> so uh, in, in in this example i took just to uh, demonstrate that you can even do symbolic integral to some extent of course uh, not everything uh, will be possible in case the function is quite complicated it may require uh, uh, some more work but uh, the some of the standard things are already you can do Okay, now let us uh, look at uh, move on to some multivariate uh, function and uh, see how we can we can uh, uh, look at. So first first thing is uh, whenever you define function of two variables or three variables, let us say f is a function from r two to r r three to r. Uh, let us say a function from r two to r two or r three to r three etc then uh, at each point actually the coordinate function at each point let us say if the, if the function is from r2 to r2 f of x y will be some f1 of x y comma f2 of x y so that means you are giving a, a, a direction at every point so that you can visualize using plot vector field function plot vector field so for example if i if i say take some stand let us take a standard function x comma y Right, this is identity function. You are defining identity function uh, from R2 to R2. How does visualize? So, identity function will be whatever your point, your point, uh, your point, you are going in the same direction. So, the direction field, right, this is how the direction field. So, for example, near 0, this magnitude will be very small. As you go along, you can see that length of the arrow is increasing. So, that's the direction field. Now, suppose if I change, for example, x, y, I make, I interchange with y and x what will the direction field you can see here now it is not pointing in the same direction now you can see how the direction is changing or let me change it to minus y and x nine minus y on x you can check that this this will be actually a rotational field rotation field rotating anti-clockwise direction right or even if you have complicated function like uh, first coordinate is x plus y second coordinate is cos x plus 2 times uh, sin x and then also you can visualize so you can see here this is how the direction field so this this gives you how at every point what is the direction in which you have to move right that is what is called direction field so that is how you visualize uh, function from rn to rn right similarly if i have uh, let us say but the same thing if you want to also plot the curve then the sage has another option called streamline plot streamline plot so if i say it's streamline plot of the same earlier function x plus y into uh, first coordinate and second coordinate is cos x plus 2 into sin x between minus pi and pi this will take little yeah you can see here now the it is also plotting the the curve and with the arrow so this is very, very nice way of visualizing functions right so Right. But you can also plot a vector field, the direction field of any function from Rn to Rn in, uh, in three dimension also, right? In three dimension, of, in two dimension, three dimension you can do. So let us look at, this is the direction field of the first coordinate is x plus y, second coordinate is x minus z, third coordinate is y plus z. For example, if I, if I take this as, uh, if I simply take this as, uh, let us say, x comma y comma z, and then it will be identity right this is identity function and in this case you can see here you can rotate and see how this direction field changes right right or you can have even complicated functions and then you can plot its direction field in so in two and three dimension it is quite easy to visualize function from r2 to r2 and r3 to r3 using this direction field right okay right now let us look at uh, suppose we have a function we have a function z is equal to x to the power 4 plus y to the power 4 minus 4xy plus 1. 
okay and let us say we want to explore this function so that means we uh, would like to find what are the partial derivatives maybe what is gradient of this function what is the jacobian what is the hessian and then maybe find local maxima local minima etc all these things will let us um, see how we can do maybe plotting graph of this function plotting graph of the contours let us look, try to explore this function okay so and uh, <clears throat> right so uh, let us define this function uh, I, I have also defined variable z though it is not needed uh, to begin with and let us plot what is how the graph of this function looks like let us first so you can use plot 3d or you can also use implicit plot 3d right so let us uh, say that we since this function is defined as z is equal to fx y which is equal to this we can use implicit plot 3d and let us see what is the the graph okay so that's the graph of the function it looks very nice and you can see here this function has two local minimum and one saddle point right this is what you see right and uh, you can even plot the contour of this function contour plot so contour plot you can see here there will be there are two uh, local minimum local or local maximum and this here is a saddle point right and you can see the the label the the label curves of each of this contour is label of each of this contour is also plotted right so you can see here right so right so this is this gives you uh, once you plot the graph of this such functions i mean uh, in terms of local maximum local minima it gives you very good idea right so that is why one should uh, always try to plot right of course sage has uh, facilities and you cannot uh, expect it to do manually right okay now let us uh, uh, look at how we can find partial derivatives so uh, let us look at what was the function fx f x y uh, i can ask it to show this this function sorry this this function is x to power 4 plus y to power 4 minus 4xy four plus 1 this is the function and uh, suppose we want to find partial derivative of this function so uh, as i told you earlier yes, 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 I mean, in last lecture the same dif will find derivative of this function so if i say f dot dif f we can find partial derivative of this function using same dif of function with respect to x that's the partial derivative with respect to x if i say with respect to y this will give me partial derivative with respect to y if i say with respect to uh, x followed by y this will give me second order partial derivative of f with respect to x first and then followed by y so you can see here when i differentiate with respect to x the, it is 4 x uh, 4 uh, minus 4 y and then with respect to y it will give me minus 4 similarly you can find second order derivative suppose if i find uh, second order partial derivative f dot d i f f with respect to x and let us say twice this is second order partial derivatives right so like that you can find partial derivative of any order and again as i said uh, generally says it tries to keep uh, uh, similar same function which will work in multiple setup so diff works for one variable function differentiation and it also works for multivariate function okay similarly you can find gradient so if i say f dot gradient and you know that gradient is what is gradient of a function it is a vector right it is a vector it is in fact a direction in which function increases with maximum speed and negative of the gradient is a function uh, or a direction in which function decreases with maximum speed so this this uh, you can uh, very very easily find out what is the gradient of this this function so it says that the first coordinate of this gradient function is 4x cube minus 4y and second coordinate is 4y cube minus 4x so this is nothing but partial derivative of f with respect to x and the second coordinate is partial derivative of f with respect to y okay and uh, so if you want to plot a graph of this gradient along with let us say uh, the contours so let us do that so we have already plotted the graph uh, let us uh, let us store this in uh, uh, let us store this the gradient uh, this this is the contour 
let me call this as ct contour i'll get rid of uh, um, the labeling i don't want label so let us get rid of the label so that's the the contour and next let us uh, let us plot the vector field vector field that is gradient field so i'll call this as gf stands for gradient field so there is a option called plot plot vector field plot underscore vector field of what a gradient so i'll call this as g gradient let us say f dot gradient and let us say x goes from minus 2 to 2 and y also goes from minus 2 to 2 and let us so this is gf is equal to gf is equal to and then let us plot these two together so contour along with gf ct plus gf okay this is what you see here so you can see here the gradient is the arrow right the direction and if you look at at any point uh, on the curve for example if i look at this 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 point and you can see the gradient gradient is always perpendicular to the level curve this uh, you must have done in uh, several wide world calculus this is a fairly simple exercise or geometric notion where it says that if you take any level surface at any point the gradient is perpendicular to that surface okay so that is that is what it demonstrates at every point of course you can you can uh, take a particular curve and take several points and plot the gradient to demonstrate yeah you can also find the jacobian so if i say f dot or let me say jacobian jacobian uh, jacobian jacobian of f of x comma y but you need to mention with respect to variable so variables are x and y so this jacobian the, the jacobian is a matrix so in this case the function is from r2 to r so jacobian will be you know, one cross two matrix so this is see here this is the first uh, coordinate this is the second coordinate okay similarly you can find hessian hessian is second derivative the matrix of the second derivative so if you say f dot hessian hessian you can get this is uh, let me say this hessian at x comma y right so you can see here this is the second second order parcelarity of f with respect to x and this is the mixed second order parcel derivative and this is the second order parcel with respect to y so that's the hessian so these all these things can be very easily obtained using inbuilt function gradient jacobian hessian right right okay very good so and then you can also explore other uh, other uh, notions now let us see we want to find local maxima local minima of this function so already you have seen from the contour plot we know that there is, there is one saddle point um, and this is at 0 0 in fact and there are two lo uh, local uh, minimum uh, that one is at x equal to minus 1 y is uh, y is equal to at x equal to uh, minus 1 y equal to minus 1 other one is at 1 1 right so that is what uh, we can see here and uh, from the surface also you you have seen there is two local minimum and one saddle point so let us try to verify this using um, sage let us see how we can make use of sage to do this problem okay so uh, i'm sure you you <coughs> you know how to find local maximum local minimum first you need to find critical points and the critical points uh, the critical points will be uh, the <coughs> solve parcelarity of a with respect to x equal to 0 parcelarity of a with respect to y equal to 0 and uh, both simultaneously for x y those are the critical points and at these critical points you can uh, find out what is the nature of the hessian in case hessian is positive definite at these critical points uh, the, the that critical point will be local uh, minimum in case the hessian is positive definite at that critical point it, the, it will be local minimum and in case indefinite we will just write that as a uh, saddle point so let us see how we can do and we can also make it a, a program kind of thing because uh, to automate to a certain extent okay so let us say we have this function right these things we have already seen so let me not get into so let us find out fx is equal to parcelarity of f with respect to x fy as parcelarity of y with f with respect to y fyy as parcelarity of f with respect to y twice fxy as parcelarity of 
f with respect to x with respect, and then followed by y and in this case f x y and f y x both are the same so uh, right and then we let us solve f x y f partial rate of f with respect to x equal to 0 partial rate of f with respect to y equal to 0 for x y and again let us use solution dict equal to true so it will give me the solution in terms of dictionary so let us let us execute this oh, i have not executed this part so just one second i'll I think there is something i'll just reset <coughs> reset so that yeah now let us find let us these things we don't need to execute this yeah so this is uh, there are actually <coughs> you can see here there are more solutions but uh, many of them are in uh, imaginary so we need to consider only the real solutions of this so in this case we have one two three four five six seven solutions but many of them are imaginary so we will screen out only those which are imaginary so how do we do that so uh, for s in in s s is the set of solutions in case solution x value of the solution is r in rr rr stands for real similarly if this is in uh, rr y coordinate and x coordinate if both are real then you print that solution so in this case you see that there are only two solutions one is minus one minus one one is second one is one one and the third one is zero zero this is what we saw this is what we, we saw uh, from the the contour plots now let us look at how do we uh, how do we classify these critical points so uh, in case the hessian at these critical points we have to see if it is positive definite then the the solution is uh, the critical point is local minimum if it is negative definite local maximum and if it is indefinite is zero so I have written a small uh, program for uh, check. So it says that define extreme. First, find the second derivative, right? To define the Hessian. So D is D is the determinant of this uh, Hessian matrix, right? And in case D is positive, and in case the uh, first order parcel uh, second uh, fx square is positive, then it is local minimum. Otherwise, check whether f11 is negative. In that case, it is local maximum provided D is positive. And um, if if, uh, if if we don't know what if it is negative or positive, then the test is inconclusive. And in case D is negative, then it gives you D is the determinant. It gives you the saddle point. And if D is zero, determinant is zero. That is inconclusive. Okay. So you can make it more complicated. So this is fairly simple. And uh, uh, once you have learned this F else, it is quite simple. So let me run this. Let me run this. I think this is just twice. And then now let us uh, create a data of critical points. And for each of these critical point, first check whether this critical point is real. And once it is real, that uh, this is these are the critical points. And uh, at each of these critical point, I am asking what is the the nature of the solution. The extreme f a comma b will find whether it is local maximum, local minimum or saddle point. So you can see here it is giving you minus one, one minus one is local minimum, one one is again a local minimum and zero zero is a saddle point. And that is what we saw from the from the graph. Right? From the graph you can see here this is a local minimum, this is a local minimum, this is a saddle point. Right? So it is fairly simple. Of course this this function which I have defined extreme will uh, will work only if uh, in case it is able to find this uh, solutions explicitly uh, right if in uh, otherwise you you may have to resort to some more uh, uh, maybe you have to look at you have to call numerical uh, uh, solution <coughs> right so let me, this is just repetition so let me repeat uh, delete this right. and you can you can uh, maybe uh, extend this or try to use the same th these two function uh, these two ex finding a stimum of the the function and uh, classifying this to some other uh, function okay so this you can fairly uh, repeat right okay now let us uh, let us look at a uh, few more concepts so uh, we, we looked at taylor series expansion in one variable case 
even in two variable case the same Taylor function will will uh, work so suppose I have this this is a function this is a function f of x y let me see what is the function so so f of x y right so this is e to the power minus x square minus y square into sine 2 x into sine 3 y suppose we want to find out Taylor's expansion of this how do we do that of course you can take help on Taylor's so if I say f dot Taylor and say question mark one question mark or double question mark you will get help manual and you can find out uh, how this so let me just uh, ask for help so this is the help man document and if you go down a little bit somewhere it will give you function of two variables so let me see yeah all, all are one variable functions i think okay doesn't matter yeah so it already says here you need to mention what is the uh, x the point about uh, x and point about y so let us do that suppose we want to find taylor's expansion of f uh, x at let us say maybe 0.5 and y uh, again let us say minus 0.5 and uh, so this is the point 5.5 5, comma minus 0.5 about which we were finding Taylor's expansion and then let's find of degree 4 of degree 4 yeah so this is the Taylor's polynomial of degree 4 about uh, x naught y naught where x naught is 0 0.5 y naught is minus 0 0.5 and maybe you can plot graph of this function so let us say for example um, if I find second order Taylor's polynomial and uh, um, Okay, so this is let me call this as T2, second order Taylor's polynomial, and let us plot graph of this function along with, along with, uh, along with. So let me call this as P, but and then and this is uh, let us say um, I don't know T2, T2 we have already called. So let us say P2, P2 the same thing instant case i'll say t2 t2 and let us put this this color is let us say this color is uh, i don't know let me say green green and uh, let us say opacity opacity is equal to 0.4 and let us say p plus p2 let us say p plus p2 how the graph looks like let me make it bigger okay so yeah right so not very so we have to restrict the y range so what i'm trying to tell you the sec actually it, uh, at that point uh, the second order parts uh, you can try to plot graph of taylor's polynomial along with the surface of degree one degree two degree three and so on you will see that as you increase the degree the approximation becomes much better these are approximated using Taylor's expansion right so that is what I just wanted to now let us another uh, simple uh, example uh, you can you can look at is uh, so, yeah, let me see. so suppose you have a homogeneous function f x y in two variables or in n variables so we, when do we say f is homogeneous function of degree n if f of T x T y. If you substitute the place x by T x y y T y, then it becomes T to the power n times f of x y. And then you must have seen that uh, in this case, x times partiality of f with respect to x plus y times partiality of f with respect to y. If you do, this is nothing but n times f of x. Similarly, if I do the second order derivative, that is x square times second order partiality of f with respect to x plus 2 x y times second order partiality of f with respect to x and followed by y plus y square times partiality of f second order partiality of f with respect to y then it is n into n minus 1 times f so let us try to verify this result this is quite simple so what you have to do so first if you want to check whether this this is um, uh, homogeneous or not so in this case this is of degree 3 so i have just said n is equal to 3 and if if i replace f of t x 
ty if i say x equal to tx y equal to ty remember t is also defined as a variable and then you equate you have to use what is called boolean right so bool of the f of x i don't think i require fun factor uh, without that also it should work whether it is, it is equal to tq into f of xy and the answer is true similarly you can create uh, x times the derivative of f with respect to x plus y times the derivative of y with respect to uh, f with respect to y and then uh, expand that and equate it to n times f of xy this will also uh, so let me this is also true similarly i can have the second order parcel derivatives this is again it is true so we have just verified these two results it's very simple i mean you can but uh, even more complicated whenever you you see a uh, chapter on parcel derivative you will see that there are lots of equations you may have to very uh, verify that the parcel derivative satisfy this equation that equation etc so in such cases you can very easily use says and uh, verify them at the end let me so already uh, more than an hour but let me uh, give you one more um, application usually towards the end of the uh, local maxima local minima you also look at uh, lagrange multiplier which is constraint maximization minimization problem so let us just look at one problem the problem is to maximize or minimize the uh, x square plus y square plus z square subjected to x square plus y square minus z square minus 1 equal to 0 and x plus y plus z minus 4 is equal to 0 so here you, you can see here i mean the constraints this is actually this represents a, uh, a kind of code and this represents a sort of uh, the, the plane so what we are looking at we are looking at the intersection of this cone with the surface and on this intersection this intersection will be some kind of ellipse you can visualize and on this intersection what is the maximum uh, distance from the origin and what is the minimum distance of the origin that's a geometric way of understanding this question but generally you will do this in analytically first you will define what is called lagrangian function which is f of x y plus lambda times or lambda 1 times uh, g x y plus lambda 2 times h of x y and then you differentiate with respect to x y z and lambda 1 lambda 2 equate it to 0 and solve the, that for x y z lambda 1 lambda 2 and this lambda 1 lambda 2 is what is called Lagrange multipliers and then you at these uh, solution points also critical points uh, you evaluate the function value and in case you have only finitely many these critical points you just compare the value of the function otherwise one has to go for what is called second order derivative test that generally in first course you may not do but uh, in case you have done optimized course on optimization you must have already seen so let us look at uh, let us define these two functions f which is x square plus y square plus z square that is the distance function uh, square of the distance function in fact and g1 is x square plus y square minus z square minus 1 is equal to 0 g2 is x plus y plus z minus 4 is equal to 0 and uh, mm, and let us plot graph of these two surfaces constraint so you can see here uh, let me slightly so you can see here the intersection is is this curve so on this curve you you want to find out of course i can increase the uh, the the height you can find you want to find out what is the maximum from the origin which point is minimum from the origin right so uh, this l is defined as lagrangian function which is f minus g1 times l lambda and mu so instead of lambda 1 lambda 2 i have called this lambda and mu and then define this gradient of this function that is partial derivative with respect to x y z and lambda and then solve with respect to you know, solve this grad l equal to g l 0 is equal to 0 that is the first derivative derivative with respect to x is equal to 0 similarly the other things so this is fairly simple let me yeah. right so in this case you can see here again there are several critical points but some of them are imaginary so we will extract only the we will extract only the real real solutions so there are uh, how many uh, one two there are only two two solutions that is what you saw uh, from the graph 
the intersection is an ellipse one will be at the smallest distance from the origin other one will be the, at the farthest distance from the origin so these are the two critical points and then at these two critical points you can evaluate the function right so this is the first critical point and uh, this is the value of the function this is the second critical point this is the value of the function and you can see here this is the local uh, this is the maximum this is the minimum okay so this is uh, uh, and you can see here uh, uh, in order to do these all these things little bit of programming uh, I, I have used but uh, although it is not necessary i mean you can still uh, uh, do without uh, doing the uh, knowing the programming but in case you know the programming i mean uh, you can do it uh, in a much more convenient way and uh, it becomes uh, you can really replicate this to any example that is what uh, is advantage okay so uh, this is what uh, i wanted to communicate today i think it is uh, it covers basically uh, uh, most of the concepts in differential calculus uh, including the local maxima local minima so in case uh, you are teaching this or you are studying this you can explore uh, more on uh, on all the concepts of course there are uh, one one can also look at uh, some vector calculus concepts etc but um, i will not get into all these things because I, I just wanted to spend two lectures in calculus just to give you a very basic uh, idea but uh, in case you are interested you have to explore more on your own and um, similarly in the next uh, three classes uh, as i said we will be looking at linear algebra that will be quite interesting as i said uh, uh, CAG is very good in uh, doing concepts in linear algebra so that you will see that how good it is and uh, <clears throat> right so uh, of course uh, these assignments etc will I'll, I'll send it uh, to all of you and you can solve and you can solve many more problems these are all just sample problems i would say okay and of course uh, maybe you may be hearing some noise because of this uh, cyclone today so i'm uh, sorry about that because uh, i can't uh, prevent that but in any case so thank you very much uh, for attending this um, uh, this lecture and uh, uh, looking forward to your company in the uh, 